Hello, and welcome to the Birds in Winter series. My name is Jen Balava, and I'm the lead naturalist for the Burlington County Park System. This multi-part series details all different aspects of birds and bird behavior found in our area of New Jersey in the wintertime. In part two, I covered migration in detail, and I said that about 60 species of birds migrate from northern regions to our area in the winter months. If you're counting those found inland and along the coast, at least 30 of them are waterfowl, and six more are water birds that are often confused as waterfowl. That does not include rarities. These migratory water birds come mostly from Canada, some of them from the high Arctic, and make their way down the Atlantic Flyway, as you see on the map, and eventually make their way down the Atlantic coastline. Some of them pass through New Jersey on their way to winter and grounds further south, and then again on the way back north to breeding grounds once again. And then others can be seen throughout the winter months. Waterfowl are classified by having webbing between three toes, broad bills, and waterproof plumage. They include swans, geese, and ducks. There are also other birds that are often found swimming with waterfowl, such as cormorants, loons, grebes, and coots, but these do not fit these exact characteristics. We'll look at these in just a little bit. First, let's take a look at the group known as waterfowl. Swans and geese are large birds, and they live a long time. Swans can live 20 to 30 years, and geese can live anywhere from 10 to 24 years in the wild. So a lot of effort is put into rearing young. Swans and geese mate for life, but ducks form a very temporary pair bond. Males and females of swans and geese are identical. You can't tell them apart. But in ducks, the males are generally much more colorful. Males and females both take care of the young. With ducks, the females do all the work. And this explains why the females are so plain and camouflaged as they're sitting on the nest the whole time, and the males are not, so they can afford to be flashy colors. And with swans and geese, the young remain with their parents for months. And with ducks, females stay with the young for about six weeks. Let's take a look at a year in the life of a migratory duck. In the fall, between the end of October and the end of November, the ducks begin to arrive at their wintering grounds. And in December, we start seeing courtship displays given by the males, some of which are really crazy looking, mostly strange head bobbing. In January to March, that's when we see pair bonds forming between the males and the females. So this is really useful for identifying waterfowl, especially tricky ducks, because males are generally really colorful. And when they pair up with the females, it helps you identify both at once. Later in March, they will mate and then depart for their breeding grounds in the north. So that's what we see here. Of course, a lot of other things happen. The remainder of the year, from April to June, they'll be nesting on their breeding grounds from July to August, there's a special post-breeding molt that takes place. Unlike most birds, almost all waterfowl molt all their flight feathers at the same time, so they're unable to fly. This seems really dangerous, but these birds tend to be pretty heavy relative to their wing surfaces, so the loss of only a few flight feathers, if they were to molt just a small amount at a time, would seriously compromise their ability to fly. So for waterfowl, it's better to be grounded for a quick overhaul rather than a long period of difficult flying. This is where we get the term sitting duck from, since the birds cannot fly to escape danger. And then finally in late September to October, they'll undergo a second molt to change the drab colors to their winter plumage and then migrate south once again. Swans are the largest of the waterfowl. The mute swan is the heaviest flying bird that we have here in New Jersey at 33 pounds. 
And generally, swans are vegetarians. The mute swan is here year round. And it's actually not native to this country. It was brought here from Europe. They've established themselves throughout the Northeast. The native swan that we only see in the winter months is the tundra swan, which as its name implies, nests on the Arctic tundra. You can see both of these swans in the winter time, usually along the coast or in interior lakes, and they eat submerged plant material. Here are some pictures of tundra swans seen at Whitesbog. You can see they have a long straight neck and a black beak. Next, we have the geese. So, of course, the Canada goose is now resonant throughout the United States, and we're all familiar with them. The snow goose is a migratory species we only see in the winter time, coming from the Arctic tundra. Both geese eat submerged plant material as well as seeds from fields. Snow geese in flight are white with black wingtips and often are found in enormous flocks. This picture was taken by the Burlington County Fairgrounds. The only other species of goose we have in the winter is the brant. The brant is smaller than a Canada goose, it has an all black head and neck. This is found along the coastline in the winter. So if you go out towards the ocean, you'll see brant, but these are very rare inland. These come from the very high Arctic. So unlike the geese and swans that are primarily vegetarians, ducks eat, have a much more variable diet. They do eat plants, but some also eat various kinds of shellfish, aquatic insects, and in the case of merganser's fish. So in general, we classify the ducks into two broad groups. The dabblers or marsh ducks that sort of just upend and feed in shallow water bodies. So they're mostly feeding on aquatic vegetation. You often just see their butts sticking out out of the water. And very good examples of dabblers are mallards and their close cousins, the black duck. The wood duck is a dabbling duck that's actually found in our area the whole year, not just in the winter. So this is a duck that actually breeds in tree cavities or in our artificial nest boxes that we provide for them. The male is just stunning. It looks like it's been painted They've come back from the brink of extinction. If you go to some of our parks like Boundary Creek, you can see wood ducks throughout the year. This picture was taken of immature wood ducks through the bird blind at Boundary Creek. The rest of all the ducks that you'll see are migratory. Some more examples of dabbling ducks include the blue winged tail and the green winged tail. The blue winged tail we only see in our part of New Jersey when it's passing through in migration. But green winged tail can be seen at various points throughout the winter time. Another dabbling duck is the American widgeon. You can see the male uh, in the picture on the bottom and the female pictured uh, above. The gadwall is a dabbling duck that can be found inland or at the coast. Ordinarily in Burlington County, we find them on lakes. And this is an exception where the male is actually pretty uh, subtle uh, colors, kind of like the female. Uh, next dabbling duck is the northern pintail. You can see the male is very distinctive, beautiful markings and a long tail. The female is sort of a more rusty color. These can be seen throughout the winter. One of my personal favorites, the amazing northern shoveler with that crazy spatula-like bill. So distinctive, you can't mistake it for anything else. 
and they kind of sift food through the, the water with their with their bills more so than upending. The second group of ducks are known as diving ducks. So these will be found in deeper water and actually submerge their whole bodies to feed. The canvas back is a duck that's only found passing through our area once around December as it goes south and then again around the beginning of March when it's heading back north towards its breeding grounds. The common golden eyes are usually found out on uh, bays or out in the Delaware River and the males have a green head, the females have a, a brownish head and uh, these diving ducks are relatively uncommon but can be seen occasionally in the winter. The ring neck duck is a terrible name. You can't see the ring on its neck at all. It really should be the ring billed duck. In any case, these ducks can be seen pretty commonly throughout Burlington County in the winter time, diving mostly in uh, lakes that are surrounded by woods, like Willingboro Lakes or Smithville Lake. Here's a picture showing how most of the time you see the males with the dark black uh, head and back. The females are brown. And scalp look very similar to ringneck ducks, but they have a brighter um, back and sides. And the lesser scalp are found inland, and the greater scalp are generally found towards the coast. The bufflehead is a really small diving duck. They're usually seen in small flocks. The males are, have a lot more white on their bodies and they eat mostly mollusks and crustaceans. You can see them a lot on the Delaware River in the winter time. The ruddy duck is another small diving duck. You can see this in some of our parks throughout the winter, but most of the time you're more likely to see these closer to uh, the, the ocean near bays. They have a stiff tail that sticks up when they're not swimming, so that's a really good field mark. Morganses are a specific family of ducks that specialize in eating fish. They have a long, narrow bill that's definitely not a typical duck bill with sharp serrations on the edges for holding on to slippery fish. There's three species of mergansers in our area. We have the small hooded merganser, very distinctive. The males have a really interesting hood that can be raised or lowered depending on if they're showing off for the females. They're usually more uh, in places that have more woods. And the common merganser is much larger and generally found in more open areas. And you can see these throughout the winter months. And the red-breasted merganser is generally associated with salt water, so you're more likely to see them towards the Atlantic coastline or at places like Forsyth that have brackish marshes. If you go out to the Atlantic Ocean, you'll find even more diving ducks that we call sea ducks that are especially adapted to living out at sea in harsh conditions. Some of them can dive to depths of up to 180 feet. They include species like the long-tailed duck, harlequin duck, three species of scoters, and eiders. One example of a sea duck is the long-tailed duck. You can see the male there. They're going to be found along the Atlantic Ocean in rough water. One of my absolute favorite sea ducks is the harlequin duck, which is really only found at the Barnegat Light jetty. You can see these throughout the winter, and they're really some of the most beautiful ducks you could ever imagine. And to conclude, we're just going to look at some other water birds that are often confused as waterfowl. Loons are large swimming birds with dagger-like bills that dive to catch their food. Their feet are placed all the way back near their tail 
which makes them really excellent at swimming, but very awkward on land. So we have the common loon that you see here, and then also the red-throated loon. We have these two species in the winter only, and the pictures you see are in winter plumage. Your best bet to see loons is near the ocean. Grebes are diving birds that are only found in our area in the colder months. You can see they have essentially no tail and they have very strange lobed toes instead of webbed feet. They eat aquatic insects, crustaceans, small fish, and tadpoles. Cormorants have four toes connected by webbing instead of three toes like waterfowl. They have a pouch under their bill and they're most closely related to pelicans. They swim pretty low in the water with the bill raised, so sometimes they're confused with loons from a distance. They eat mostly fish, and they're incredibly efficient divers. They can dive much deeper than most other water birds. Their feathers are strange in that they're not completely waterproof. They're waterproof at the center, but not at the edges. This strange adaptation allows them to dive much deeper because they're less buoyant, but they must spread their wings to dry. So you'll see cormorants out of the water in this way with their wings out to dry them. The double crested cormorant that you see on the left is found throughout the year in our area. So that's resonant. But the great cormorant is a migratory species that's only found in the winter months, generally at the Atlantic coastline. We have seen them occasionally at the Delaware River. And the last water bird species is the American coot. This is a member of the rail family. It has long legs, sort of looks chicken-like when it's out of the water. Certainly a large bill and very strange looking lobed feet. They often do associate with ducks and pump their head back and forth while swimming. These are only found in the winter months in our area. Hopefully you got the idea that there's a lot of diversity of water birds out there. So you gotta get out in the winter time and look for them. Great places to go in Burlington County or many of our, our county parks that are adjacent to the Delaware River and the Rancocas Creek. And then there's some fantastic places along the Atlantic Ocean like Forsyth, Cape May, Sandy Hook, and Barnegat that are great for a lot of those diving ducks we talked about, as well as loons and grebes. So I hope that this presentation inspires you to get out and look for some of these amazing water birds in the wintertime. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll tune in next time for part four, which will be on raptors and woodpeckers in two weeks. See you then.